Good evening and welcome to another episode of Melbourne 22. This evening we look into the world of psychic readers. We learn more about Melbourne's history. And discover what it takes to survive a cosplay convention. That and a whole lot more coming up on Melbourne 22. Hello and welcome back to episode 4 of Melbourne 22. I'm Aaron McCarthy. And I'm Anna Burgess. <laughs> nice. See, she picks up pretty quick. Now, Anna, <laughs> not boys. Uh, Anna. Yes, Aaron. <laughs> Have you ever heard of cosplay? Yes, but you no, know, I'm lying. What? You've heard the word though, right? Yes. Okay, well... It's kind of all about costumes and playing, that apparently. I'm like no expert. That sounds like a good Saturday night to me, but it yes, does. tell me more. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like those parties you go to. I'm no expert. However, um, recently we had our crew take off and go to one of the cosplay conventions, Comic-Con. It was an absolutely fantastic day out. They've been very excited about it in the lead up. Mm -hmm. Here's a bit of a package of what they saw. Amazing. Amazing. Those outfits to die for. And yeah, look, I think that's that's a big part of it. It's, a, it's about the outfits, but it's about the backstories as well and people almost being becoming part of the story mm. um, via dress up. So it looks like a heck of a lot of fun. It's certainly a wonderful thing to see so many Melbourne, Melbournians, Melbournians getting out there dressing up and dedicating so much time and money into something they love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. Mm. Absolutely. And, you know, it's harmless fun, you know. And I just, but you know what, I just want to know how... What do you want to look know? Look at me, look at me. What's that? Like the tiniest violin in the world, like, and I'm doing two, two of them. Two of them. Two of them. <laughs> that looks really it's suspicious like that. It's a duet. But like how much time Tuning must go into those outfits? So yeah. intricate. Yeah, you're right. Uh, that's why we today in the studio have a fellow cosplayer, Emma Wood, who knows all of the do's and the don'ts of what happens when it comes to cosplay. Hi, Emma. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. Now, Emma. Can you please explain to us what cosplay is all about? Well, to begin with, cosplay means costume roleplay. 
So it's basically taking your favourite character from a movie or a cartoon and dressing up as them. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty fun when you get into it. Mm -hmm. And how long does it take you to make one of your costumes? Well, it depends on what sort of you're going for. Um, usually even the simplest of things turns out to be quite intricate and detailed. Um, I did bring a few along. Uh, this one here is from... This is scary, yep, correct. Not really. <laughs> from the inside, it looks fine. It's the Little me. Mermaid, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, like, <real>. Yes. <laughs> so gorgeous. Um, it's from the movie Silent Hill, so it's one of the nurses. Um, this took about three and a half months to make. Wow. So it had a beanie on the inside and it was like a balloon over a beanie with a paper mask taped to it and then you just sort of work from there. So... So there's specific techniques for all of these costume things that you've made. Can we have a look at a few of the other things? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. So to go with the mask, I've got the dress. Whoops, don't Ooh, fall. Oh yes. The Is dress. Cinch that in with a belt. Head. That's can a Saturday night can I put outfit. It on? Oh, of course. For a small person's head. You take. It's rather the... large. It's... I know. I've noticed. <laughs> you just, just take that off the head. side, and you can okay. put that on there. Am I gonna? Are you sure? Yeah, go for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was a big head. Yeah. Oh man. That is so much better. <laughs> Hi, that... I'm Aaron McCarthy and welcome to Melbourne 22. That is so much better. Like only two weeks ago there was a dog in front of his face which worked beautifully <laughs> and now, now this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It actually seems I can't even you. see which camera, is <laughs> <laughs> which camera is it. Hello. Now let's get back to the Comic Con convention. Mm. Can anybody yeah. just turn up? <laughs> He's going to face act now. Can anyone just turn up? Like, who goes? What's the um, go? Pretty much anyone who has a ticket can get in, so you don't specifically need to dress up to get in there. Um, it is a lot more fun if you do, but there are a lot of people that just walk around in casual clothes or photographers. Yeah. Uh, pretty much you go, um, and it's full of celebrities, so you get to line up and meet them, get your photo taken and autograph, which is all wonderful. Your favourite celebrity then? Um, my favourite celebrity that I've met so far would probably be... Be Tom Felton from Harry Potter, so J.K. Malfoy. No way! It was <laughs> Can I just say, have you ever seen The Karate Kid? Uh, what one? Okay, the first one with the evil blonde guy. The original one, They're yes. the same dude! <laughs> what do you mean they're the same dude? Evil from blonde guy and Karate Kid. Malfoy. Okay. Look at them together. Same person. All right, quick, can we just quickly have a look at what else you've got here? Just oh, no quickly problem. throw them up to us because we're... So we're I've got the dress. Sure. Yep, the dress. So that's kind of your is size. The, this yep. is the dress for the... You could wear that. The matching. Yep, that works yep. together. What and else you, you know got? What? You know what? Put that with a nude pump. That's a Saturday night outfit. Oh Actually, that's what they wear. I, remind me never to go out with you on a Saturday night. This is the scalpel. What do you got over here? Um, Over here we have anti Saurus shoes from the game Kingdom Hearts. Yep, so shoes that don't like dinosaurs. Very good. anti And I have a few bunions on my toes, so they would actually work really Really nicely. I've got really got ugly ex dancer feet. feet. Wow. Yeah, it's I actually never... the ultimate workout gorgeous. with those. What are these here? That is the rest of the costume for Anti Sora. Okay. So I've got the pants. These are some of the things that you can buy Where's online. Where's Anti Sora from? Anti Sora is from Kingdom Hearts. So it's the contrast of the um, protagonist Sora. So it's his sort of dark shadow inner form. Okay. Now one final question. There's costume competitions. Yes. Can you explain to us how they work? Okay, um, costume competitions, uh, to pop it simply, is when everyone sort of, you have to, they've got sort of standards that you have to go through where you have to have made the entire costume yourself, not okay. purchased it online. So there's rules. There is like rules that. and regulations to go by. But it's pretty much everyone sort of goes on stage and they do like a little bit of a performance, a dance, an act, and then they, it's in front of a panel of judges and it's quite quite fun to go have a look at. So. Mm. I think we're ready to go do some dress ups. I think yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Emma for very much for joining us. No problem. Now before the break, but let's just have a look at what's on next for the show. Mm. Coming up after the break. Um, I read with the cards and also the black mirror, crystals, crystal balls. Yeah. You feeling it? You feeling the flow? <laughs> Welcome back to Melbourne 22. And you know, Emma actually got me thinking a lot, Aaron. Well, that could be a challenging thing to do. About what? About what you may look like in a dress. Hmm. You shouldn't think you'll hurt yourself. Mm. Well, anyway, what would you dress up as? 
You know, I've often, like, you know, this is my thing. I want to discuss this Tell me with thing. everyone at Melbourne 22. Mm. Why is it that when it comes to Halloween, when women dress up in all these sexy, gorgeous things and guys just dress up as like Doesn't a big work. potato or like, you what know. What kind of Halloween parties do you go to? Well, sexy ones, apparently. But Vegetable women always go to town ones. and yeah, anyway. Well, we hit the streets yet again and ask that exact question. If you could dress up as anything, what would you be? What? Let's see what people had to say. <laughs> Astro Boy, Batman. Drag Queen. I don't know, Bert or Ernie, they're quite cool. I would probably dress up the way I'm dressed now. He's got a body for the Hulk. If I could dress up as Johnny Depp from Blow. Uh, a mix of sneakers. In terms of have that wardrobe would just be outstanding. And pull it off too. That'd be pretty good. Really nice pants, suit pants. Oh gee, that would be Cinderella. Oh, such a top one. Because I'm married to Prince Charming. I have no idea. <laughs> probably Iron Man because he is probably like the coolest character ever. I have a pretty oh, cool wow. Supergirl costume <laughs> I dress up in sometimes when I come out. I like the way I dress myself. Uh, can I just continue dressing the way I dress? I really like the fact that there was that guy there who said he dressed up as sneakers. What, what's going on there? I like what he's at, where he's at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The man's got soul. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, yeah. There were some good answers. There was. Mm. Uh, you know, if I, I think I would dress up as uh, a witch for Halloween. Which witch? Which witch of a witch witch? What? It, would you dress up as a specific witch, like the Oz witch or the... Maybe the good witch. Right, well, speaking of witches, our next segment features a real life witch. Does she ride around on a broomstick and have a black cat, I wonder? I think she actually does have a black cat. You reckon? I... How do you know that? Have you been to her house? Do you know her? We were talking cats earlier in the green room. I'm looking forward to this one. <laughs> Let's have a watch. Using a mix of remedies, herbs and practices, they assist a person to enlighten their life. Uh, my name's Danny and my business is Spellbox. I call myself a witch, but that's just a name. You know, there's rituals woven through the day. We all believe in creating a beautiful energy for the shop. So our candles lit and the incense is lit. So we bring that spiritual energy in and whoever's opening the shop calls on, you know, um, the power of the elements. I love mugwort. Mugwort is a herb used for psychic energy and dreams. And it's got the most beautiful sort of earthy smell. Frankincense is the most popular incense in the world. And it's so beautiful, it's got a beautiful spiritual vibration, so it's sort of calming and sort of connects you with sort of angel energy and all the ethereal world. We mix potions here to its spell box and we mix incense um, blends, jasmine oil, I think rose is one of my favourites. To get your oracle, clear your mind and spin the wheel of stars. Once you're done, pick up an insightful book to guide you through your challenging times. I read with the cards and also black mirror, crystals, crystal balls, the person's energy. I believe there's magic in everyone, so I feel that magic is about really believing in yourself and knowing that we're all connected. <sighs> That's made me feel so calm. Because we're all relaxed. connected. Yeah. I was expecting witches and hats and the dark arts. Those tarot cards really interested me. Yes, mm. they interested me too. Um, now, Anna, yes. could I please have your palm? Um, what do you want it for? Yeah, well, I'm going to read it. Mm. Okay. 
Open, please. Now, I've I'm got very really bendy fingers. I actually can't straighten I'm my palm, but anyway. I'm not in your bendy yeah. fingers. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I can see here because I'm, you know, good at reading palms and stuff like that. As you grow older... Um, well, how you old are, are we talking? Because I'm quite old now. Well, within the next 10 years, you're going to end up with a beautiful big house, three children and a big swimming pool. <laughs> Yay, you're so good, Aaron. You're funny. <laughs> I'm joking. Just, uh, well, we do have an experienced card reader in the studio right here with us, right mm -hmm. now. Yes, indeed we do. It's a pleasure to have her here. Welcome, Rosetta. Hey, Rosetta. Hi. Now, Rosetta, tell us, for those of you who don't know, what is a tarot card and what do you hope to achieve by doing a reading with tarot cards? That's a big question. It is loaded. <laughs> okay. Um, this this is a tarot card. Okay. <laughs> this is a like deck of tarot cards. Had a good workout There's, those ones. Well, yeah, they certainly have. Um, yes. There are seventy eight cards in a pack. Yes. They're a bit like playing cards with twenty two extra cards, and um, you achieve well. Different people achieve different things from readings, but me personally, I achieve a bit of a window into the symbolism that's around your life at the moment when you're sitting with me and doing a reading. Sure. Mm -hmm. And. Could you go through a couple of them with us and what their meanings are, perhaps? Sure. Um, I'll just pick the top one. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go for it. This is a sun card. A lot of people know this card um, because it kind of, well, he's riding his horse as this little kid and he's quite happy. So it, it talks about being uplifted and feeling good about yourself and everything in your life kind of fitting comfortably. Mm -hmm. So if I pulled that for you, I'd be smiling with you and going, I think everything's pretty cool at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Now, I know that there's some negative cards in the deck as well. It kind of freaks me out. And we were speaking about this in the green room earlier. And I was sort of saying, I'm a bit nervous about getting anything done like that because I don't know if I have something bad in my future. I don't know if I want to know about it. Mm -hmm. Do you get a lot of people who are quite scared and hesitant to want to get a reading of mm -hmm. that sort? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, I, don't, I don't predict futures. Right. So if, if a scary card comes up to me, for example, this card is you're just a bit overburdened at the moment. Okay. Yeah, so I don't believe there are scary negative cards in the pack. Yeah. They're just kind of giving you a bit of an idea of maybe an area you need to avoid or work on a little bit in your life. Sure. Yes. And, like, if people were interested in reading cards, how, how do you learn? Or is it something that's a gift and then, you know, how do you train? There are lots of different ways you can learn to read the cards. Me personally, I just picked up a deck and when I was 16 and haven't stopped in 20 something years. Yeah. Um, some people go to classes. There are classes that are available. Um, you can get lots of books. There's great authors because they've been around for so long now and um, so many books are written about them. So yeah, there's so many ways. Do you think you're sort of born with a gift, so to speak? Like mm. did you, you say you picked them up and you just kind of went from there and you've never stopped. I mean, obviously you had something that drew you to them. Do you have to, to have them. that something special within you? You can't just be any Joe Blow off the street and decide that you want to be a tarot reader, surely. Um, I think, yeah, yeah. You, your spirit's pulled to it, you're passionate about mm. it. It's mm. a bit like a musician isn't just, you know, you can learn to play a musical instrument. But whether you love it or not is a whole other thing. It's the same with tarot cards, Do you find I reckon. that there's a real negative connotation to the word witch? Do you think that there's a lot of people out there who, you know, have the fear of the unknown because there's such a mystical sort of dark backgroundy mm. sort of feel to it? Mm. Definitely. Know? It's a big unknown world, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. And that's witches aren't scared of that. So yeah. we get into the mysteries of life, which is, you know, we reveal mm. with tarot cards and things. And I think that that's what scares people is that maybe they don't want to get into the mysteries they kind of like things as they are so. do you know i'm gonna butt in there Go did on. you know that an ancestor of mine was a witch and burnt at the stake no she tried to leave her cheating husband <laughs> and she was a writer can you believe that do i know he keeps wanting to talk and <laughs> I, keep like... I want to know if real witches get jealous of harry potter these days totally he's taken all the glory he's great yeah, Rosetta, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate you my coming pleasure. along. Have to uh, get backstage and really find out what's going on in my life right now. I'm quite confused. <laughs> After the break, we have another instalment of History of Melbourne. Coming up next, we're treated to a live performance from Susie Blue. This week on History of Melbourne, we take a look at the Fitzroy Gardens, just a short stroll from the St Patrick's Cathedral, and a hop, skip and a jump from Parliament Station. The gardens were named after Sir Charles Augustus Fitzroy, who served as Governor-General from 1851 to 1855. 
you can sit and admire the beautiful craftsmanship of the Dolphin Fountain, take some bread to feed the ducks by the Grey Street Fountain, or gaze upon the garden's very first fountain, the River God. One notable example of the historic structures within the gardens is Cook's Cottage. The family home of Captain James Cook was originally built in Yorkshire in 1755, and it was transported to Melbourne and rebuilt in its present place, and was opened to the public in 1934. James Sinclair was the head gardener from the 1860s to the 1870s. Sinclair planted many of the first plants and trees that are still alive today. The old bandstand and the Temple of the Winds are two structures based on ancient Grecian design. The Temple of the Winds Rotunda bears similarities to the original in the botanical gardens. On the north side of the gardens, you will find the People's Pathway, consisting of over 10,000 ceramic tiles created by Victorians. The statue Diana and the Hounds guards the conservatory which houses many elegant flowers and adventurous shrubberies. It's the place to spend an afternoon learning our histories or seeking peace of mind. There is plenty to see and do at the gardens, but there are some things you'll need to discover for yourself. I'll tell you what, the gardens that we have in Melbourne truly are amazing and they're very much, even though we are the garden state, they're very much underrated, mm, wouldn't you say? They are. That one in particular is beautiful, except I have very bad memories of that garden. I used to personally, I had a trainer there that we'd meet every morning, like every Wednesday, I think it was at 6am and just, I, I may have been sick in that garden. Do the memories of that haunt you by haunt, any chance? They, they haunt me. They do haunt Aaron, you? They haunt me. Well, it's interesting that you say that, Anna, because we have a very interesting segue about a haunted bookshop. Have you ever been to a haunted bookshop? Well, n no, not that I'm aware of. I did go to Borders, and that may be the reason why Borders closed, but I... It's probably haunted now. It's empty. Well, we're about to find out what it's like to actually own a haunted bookshop. I started the bookshop about 16 years ago. As a young person, it was very difficult to find these sorts of books, and so there were no bookshops which specialised in uh, the supernatural or the occult. And while I was selling papers and it was a quiet moment, I would read the ghost stories. My approach was very much, well, I wanted to find out about ghosts, so I would interview people. I would go to the places. I set up this tour, which was very difficult because there was a lot of resistance to it. It was not seen as anything worthwhile in the city of Melbourne. To me, every place in the city is haunted because every place in the city is inhabited. You know, the buildings and the number of ghost sightings, the State Library of Victoria over on Swanson Street has the most number of ghosts. I was just interested in it. I wanted to explore it. And then when I learned things, I wanted to share. That gave me a little bit of a shiver, a little bit of a... Have you ever had any kind of supernatural experience? No, never. You? No? Not that I'm aware of. No. I do get shivers and things like that, but generally I just get cold. I've got a very low body fat percentage. Have you? So. Oh my gosh, you had to throw that in, didn't you? It's true. Low body fat what pinch I? test. <laughs> Actually, you're not that good. <laughs> You just pinch me low, okay? I'm sitting down and it's one of those seats where your knees are up, so it gives you a little mushroom top. Leave me alone. I don't have one. Sadly, <laughs> this brings us to a close for another jam-packed episode of Melbourne 22. You're so going to go home and eat a cake now, aren't you? <laughs> I've pushed you towards it. It's okay, it's pinch okay. Like that. It's true. Tonight's show has drawn to a close, but to play us out, we have Susie Blue playing uh, Wish Is My Dish. Thank you so much. Are you okay? I'm all right. I'll be fine. To everyone at home for, <laughs> that has joined us this week, I hope you've had a good night and that you'll tune in with us next week. <clears throat> at least Susie Blue will cheer me up. <laughs> good night. There's a wish in my dish, there's a wish in my dish And I'll never wash it out There's some hope in my bowl to my bottomless soul And I'll never wash it out There's a fairy sitting on the edge of my cup But I will not drink my tea And I promise her that I will never grow up Cause it's so good to believe There's a fire in my belly and a star in my head But I will not let them meet There's a wheel as strong as jelly It's a fire in my belly but I'll never cry defeat La la la, la la la
and the dog scratching fleas and the fruit upon the trees crying, don't you pull me down. There's a spider spinning up a web that looks like an engineering feat, but I'll never pull it down because I know that's where her baby spider sleep. Well, the land and the seas and the oceans and the trees long before we're here. The guy in the sky or the god with the beard, what a crazy new idea. upon my finger I'm a happy solo singer and I know what I'm about there's a boy singing blue about how fast he grew too soon became a man there's a boy singing blue about how fast he grew wishing he was Peter Pan the la la 